Hello, I'm Dr. Max Petrov from the Department of Surgery at the University of Auckland, New Zealand. Today I'm going to talk about what determines the severity of acute pancreatitis and to discuss the practical implication of this. This question was addressed in our paper in the September 2010 issue of Gastroenterology titled Organ Failure and Infection of Pancreatic Necrosis as Determinants of Mortality in Patients with Acute Pancreatitis. The paper reported a meta-analysis of 14 clinical studies that included almost 1,500 patients with acute pancreatitis. There have been two schools of thought. There have been those who have considered that pancreatic infection has been the primary driver of severity. There are others who have considered that organ failure primarily determines severity. Our way was to explore these two factors, organ failure and infection of pancreatic necrosis as determinants of the severity of acute pancreatitis. The first task was to determine the absolute influence of organ failure and infected pancreatic necrosis on mortality in all included patients. We found that a total of 600 patients developed organ failure with or without infected pancreatic necrosis and 30% of them died. 314 patients develop infected pancreatic necrosis with or without organ failure and 32% of them died. Thus, we showed that the absolute influence of organ failure and infected pancreatic necrosis on mortality is equivalent. Further, the presence of either indicates severe cause of acute pancreatitis. The second task was to determine the influence of infected pancreatic necrosis on mortality in those patients who developed organ failure, and vice versa. We found that the presence of infected pancreatic necrosis was associated with a statistically significant and twofold increased risk of death in patients with organ failure. We also found that the presence of organ failure was associated with statistically significant and more than twofold increased risk of death in patients with infected pancreatic necrosis. The third task was to compare the risk of mortality in patients with organ failure and no infected pancreatic necrosis with those with infected pancreatic necrosis and no organ failure. We found no statistically significant difference in the risk of mortality between these two groups. In summary, our study demonstrates that the relative risk of death is at least two times higher in patients who have both organ failure and infected pancreatic necrosis, and that organ failure and infected pancreatic necrosis are independent and equivalent determinants of severity in acute pancreatitis. These findings give very strong support to the call for a revision of the current international classification of acute pancreatitis. As you know, the Atlanta classification defined two categories of severity, mild and severe pancreatitis, and assess only the presence or absence of organ failure and presence or absence of any local complication. But it is now recognized that the duration of organ failure is an important determinant of outcome. In particular, that persistent organ failure is a more important determinant of mortality than transient organ failure. It was therefore suggested that only patients with persistent organ failure should be defined as having severe acute pancreatitis, while all other patients, including those with local sterile and infectious complications, be defined as having mild acute pancreatitis. Recently, the research group from the Mayo Clinic led by Dr. Berger provided sound evidence to justify the introduction of a moderate category of acute pancreatitis. Our findings, as just presented, support a new category of severity, with the worst prognosis category being those with both organ failure and infected pancreatic necrosis, and we termed this critical acute pancreatitis. This data provide a sound justification for the four-category classification of acute pancreatitis, which is available as an open access article in the January 2010 issue of the American Journal of Gastroenterology. This new classification is consistent with the original Atlanta classification, but takes it further by emphasizing the importance of persistent organ failure, as opposed to any organ failure in the Atlanta classification. 
and the importance of infectious pancreatic complications as opposed to any local complication in the Atlanta classification. This new classification also stresses the clinical importance of the interaction between local and systemic complications, with the highest mortality being attributed to presence of both persistent organ failure and infectious pancreatic complications. To this end, we commend this new for category classification of acute pancreatitis because it reflects important and clinically relevant factors in individual patients. It uses widely accepted and unambiguous terms. It can be applied in both the early and late phases of acute pancreatitis. And it will be useful in the clinical setting to define and monitor the course of individual patients and in the research setting to improve the matching and comparison of patient groups. Thank you for listening to me today.